Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Up and Running. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, ring the bell right next to it for your notifications, and click the like button. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at this 1964 Ford Thunderbird convertible. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a walk around on it and kind of tell you guys what to look for when you're buying a classic car. Um, you know, there's certain things that aren't a big deal. There's certain things that cost a lot of money, and so we're going to check them out. All right, the first thing you want to do is just kind of do a, a general walk around of the car. Look for anything that jumps out at you. And, you know, you're going to want to look at it real close. Look at the gaps on the car. Make sure things are, you know, nice and tight and right. You don't want, you know, like a big wide gap up here and it goes through a little skinny gap down there. You know, look at the way the, the hood fits, you know. Back then, cars were not as tight as they are now, meaning, you know, the gaps weren't always perfect when the car was new, so you shouldn't expect them to be now unless you're spending just huge money on a car. But you just kind of want to give it, you know, the whole general overview of the car and just see if anything jumps out at you as being crazy. You're going to want to look at the condition of the chrome because chrome is expensive. Um, this particular car, you can see some of this comb is original and there's some minor pitting in it, but nothing serious. You know, so it's, it's still presentable. A lot of that will clean up. Um, you know, check and see if the trim is all dinged up, bent up. Um, a lot of that trim is very expensive nowadays. It's, it's hard to find and it's, it's very expensive. Um, you know, take a look at the bumpers. This one's actually got pretty nice bumpers on it. The chrome's in really nice shape. The chrome around the headlights is, is, is decent. So it's, uh, you know, it's very presentable. This car is intended to be just a driver type car. So, you know, you don't have to have everything perfect. If you're going to restore a car to show and to be a big dollar car, you're going to want to start with a car that's not as nice as this one. Um, you know, one that you're going to spend less money on since you're going to replace everything on it anyway. Um, Probably the most important thing that you're going to want to look for is the body and how much body rust is on it. You want to get the most rust-free body you can. That, that's where you'll um, you know, get into a lot of time and expense issues if you're doing rust repair. Uh, this particular car is super solid and it's, it's a really nice car. So as I said, we're going to walk around this car. I'll point out some little things that I see. There's a couple of door dings here or there. Um, you know, nothing real big. Uh, one thing I noticed, you know, there's a few chips in the paint along here. Um, those can be touched up, but, you know, it does affect the, the price of the car because it is a cosmetic defect. A couple of chips down here. One thing that strikes me on the, on the tires, the white walls are real... Um, dingy looking that usually tells me that the tires are old um, so what that means is you know right off the bat you're gonna have to get a new set of tires for this car so that's you know $500 um, you know right off the bat um, so keep coming around open the gas cap look see if you see anything there's no rust in there it looks really nice um, you can tell when they painted the car they painted the gas cap with the car which you know shouldn't have been done not a big deal you know, look for any rust down on the bottoms. Now, the big thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get down and, you know, actually stick your head underneath the car. You should see all the factory welds on the bottoms of the quarter. Look at the trunk floor, the gas tank, you know, everything like that to make sure there's no rust in there. Because that stuff gets very expensive. Um, you'll come around to the back. This car's got a couple of touch-ups right here. Again, not a big deal. Um, the back chrome on this car is, is decent. You can tell it's original to the car. It's got that little bit of age look to it. Um, again, if you want a perfect car, you would want to get this re chrome, but for a nice driver, there's nothing wrong with this. Um, you know, so just continue on looking at everything, make sure things aren't bent. Um, we'll walk around to the side of the car. Um, we're going to look at the top because this is a convertible. Um, right off the bat, convertible tops are, you know, $2,500. Bucks. 
and you know so just be aware if this thing's got a cut in it I mean think about it you know depending if you have a place to store it or not you know if you just have a little cut there and you need a new top you need the whole top so it's not like oh a little cut is you know a hundred bucks it's it's a whole new top so this one's really nice it's in good shape it's nice and soft yet uh, it spends a lot of time being down you can see it's a little wrinkly uh, but if you leave that out in the sun that'll come out so that's no big deal again we're just going to look at the condition of like all the hubcaps you can see these probably are original they, they show a little bit of age you know but again if you're going to drive this car there's nothing wrong with that a um, little chrome polish will clean things like that up check and see how the doors open these are super nice they're super easy you know this car is what 55 years old and the doors open like butter so that's telling you there's no sagging in the body uh, this is a unibody car so you know that that tells you that this car's in really good shape yet it's a really solid car you know on a unibody car you're going to want to check these rocker panels down here really closely because uh, these are the structure of a convertible you know when you have a hard top you get the roof as being part of the the structure as well um, but in this car, no frame, this area's got to be good. And you'll usually be able to see if there's an issue because the doors will pinch on the top. These, the gap is perfect all the way down it. It's a really nice, tight factory uh, gap. It looks great. So now we're going to look in the interior. Um, this is in really nice shape. It looks like the carpet's original. It's it's just a, a touch faded. The lights work. You know, all the trim is, you know, you can see just a little bit of age to it. Not a huge deal. Um, you know, but these door panels are really nice. And you're going to want to come into the car. Got the old California plates in, laying in here yet. Take a look at the carpeting. Pick that nail up so I don't run it over later. You know, you can see it's it's got a little age to it, but it's you know it's not perfect. It's probably the original carpeting. Um, something else I'm noticing here is this this stuff that's laying on the floor. What that is is that's the foam out of the seats. So these seats are probably original, and the foam is starting to break down over time, and it's starting to come out. So you can feel like there's some areas in this seat where there's no foam like right down through the center um, so that's where you uh, you know need to put foam in, in the seats again hopefully if you know a good upholstery shop that's not that big a deal the same way this has got a seam that opened up right here this is not a huge deal either this material is nice and soft and pliable yet uh, the upholstery shop or you for that matter if you want to take it off could pull that back together and just re-sew that back together. You're not going to need to replace any of the material. This stuff's in, in great shape. You know, even the backs of the seats here are super nice. Uh, the back seat's in great shape. Um, one of the things that attracted me to these cars, my grandma had a 64 Thunderbird uh, that I used to ride around in as a kid, and I love the curved back seat. I thought that was pretty cool, so... That's just one of my things personally. You know, even the armrest is in nice shape. The, the trim in here just shows just a little bit of wear. A lot of that will clean up pretty nice. Um, these Thunderbirds are expensive cars as far as the electrical system in them. They have a lot of wiring. They need a, you know, there's a lot to them. So be sure to go through every little piece on this car and make sure it works. This has got the slide away steering wheel on it, which is kind of cool. So when you put it in park, you can slide the steering wheel over and get it out of your way to get out. So, I mean, overall, the dash is in great shape in this car. You're not going to need to replace any of the dash. Um, you know, you can save yourself a bunch of money by just getting some chrome polish out and spending a Saturday afternoon polishing all this chrome. It'll make the car look a thousand times better and you know it'll it'll make it really pop you know just going through cleaning all the door jams up and, and things along those lines so again we'll just continue to look at all the trim bottoms of the fenders i mean that doesn't sound weird to me it seems you know like they're really nice rust free 
I'm gonna get down, look under the car again. Look at all the floor. It's fantastic. It's like new in this car. Um, sometime we'll put it up on the rack and um, you know really take a look underneath it. Um, there's a little bit of scuffing right here. A lot of that will bu uh, buff off um, and it'll clean up decent. We might have to touch up the paint there just a, a little bit. Um, take a look at the uh, on the front tires. You're going to want to come around and take a look at the tread wear. And something you'll notice on this car is that the inside of the tread shows more wear than the outside. So that tells you there's an issue going on in the front end of this car. If you when you drive it, you can feel it. So it was not a surprise to me. Um, I could tell it right away when I got in that there's something going on. Thing that it does is there's a lot of clunks when you go over bumps and that tells me that there's there's loose parts in the front end all of those ball joints and everything in the front should be really tight there should be no play in them at all if, if you're getting that that's the clunk that you're hearing so um, at a later time we'll take a look at this car when we get into it a little bit further and and figure out just exactly what's going on up there but I but I think it needs a, a fair amount of front end work so we'll uh, we'll take a look at that Normally I would have looked in the trunk when we were in the back, but the uh, convertible top goes in there, um, so we'll have to open that at a different time. Now we'll take a look at the engine bay in here. What you're going to look for is to just see how clean or dirty it is. You know, this car does show um, a fair amount of dirt, and that's all right because it tells you that they didn't clean this. If somebody spent a lot of time cleaning the engine block and all the inner fenders and things like that, I would be wondering, well, does this thing leak oil like it's free? And, you know, is, is it really need some attention? But this thing looks to be in really decent shape. You know, just a little bit of residual dirt here and there. Um, the next thing you're going to want to look at is look down these fenders. These should be nice and straight. There shouldn't be any ripples in this part of the car. Um, that would tell you that it had been in an accident. Um, so look at these inner fenders real closely, you know, especially on a unibody type car. The other thing is, I know these cars have VINs in multiple locations. There's one here, there's one up there, and then there's a warranty tag in the door that shows the VIN. Um, they should hopefully all match. That, that kind of tells you that this stuff was never replaced in this car. Um, I do suspect there was a ding in this car once. There's just a, a touch of issue right here where somebody straightened something out. It was super minor though, nothing I'm worried about. And I can see the edge of the hood had a, a just a touch of body work done to it. So, but again, nothing uh, nothing scares me here. You know, just the usual, you know, 55 years the car's bound to get a ding in it from time to time. So, um, I'm going to go back and take a peek at the, the VIN on the door, show you where that plate is. Um, back in this era, cars, the VIN locations were very different. Uh, this matches everything in the front, so we're in great shape here. This tells me it's an original door. They look like factory rivets yet, um, so that's, that's really nice. The door panel and everything is kind of like the other side where it shows just a little bit of wear, but it's, it's really nice. Um, the odometer on this car shows 30,000 and I kind of suspect from some of the paperwork that it probably is original because um, you know even back 30 some years it was at like 29,000 so um, you know I, I can't guarantee it obviously but it, it seems like it's a, it's a pretty nice car and it's in good shape so uh, this has got power seats still works. So that's kind of a nice feature. I can hear the horn relay clicking under the hood so we'll have to take a look at that. Uh, see what's going on but again the, the top's in really nice shape and overall this is a, a pretty decent car so be sure to do your research on these. Find out what they're worth and um, you know, just look them over really closely. So, I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial on how to buy a car. 
and we're going to get to work on this and uh, get some things taken care of. So hope you enjoyed it. Alright guys, today we're going to look at the, the couple of binders that came with the car, see what's in them. Let's take a look at this one first. Uh, some Thunderbird, oh this is like a Thunderbird Club info, a little booklet that they put out. Um, some more Thunderbird Club stuff. There's also some uh, technical information in here, some pictures, so that's kind of cool. Talks about some awards it shows. This is a little Thunderbird catalog for parts. That's kind of neat. It's always kind of neat to get parts stuff with it. This is more parts, parts, parts. Oh, that's cool. It always helps to have a source for some of this stuff. So this is uh, Concourse Rules from, uh, looks like maybe around 2005. Data release January of 2005. So it talks a little bit about all the rules that you have to go through. Uh, this car is nowhere near ready for this. Uh, let's see, okay, this is a factory original, factory specifications manual. Looks like it was maybe from 2002. I'm sure that's probably when it was reprinted. But that's kind of cool. It gives uh, all different types of information about the cars. So that's kind of neat. That's kind of handy to have. Alright, let's take a look at this binder. Looks like we got uh, title info. Barnes T Bird Shop of Houston, Houston, Texas. Uh, this is uh, an appraisal back in December of 2009. They said it was worth fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars. This just looks to be uh, all kinds of parts receipts. Surge tank, thermostat, radiator cap, um, uh, discount tire, looks like he had some valve stems replaced, door lock handle, window relay, another relay, radiator tank repair, Brackets, grommets, so it looks like all this is just, you know, individual parts, components, components, pieces, things like that. Looks like he uh, must have put a different radio in it at one point, some radio instructions. Some kind of a auto expo. Looks like they maybe did some auctioning. This was back in '86. So that's kind of interesting. This is Fort Worth. All different kind of classifieds in there, and then the listings. Looks like he did a DMV records request. And it looks like the records he requested were too old. Although it's got some stuff from California back here, which is where the car originally came from. But it looks like basically what they're saying in there is everything is too old and they don't have records on it anymore. <coughs> This is kind of nice. 64 to 66 T-Bird convertible top maintenance, diagnostics, and light repair. That, that's kind of cool because those tops are known to be uh, a little bit of fun. They got wiring diagrams in here. 
So that's that's kind of cool. Specification and features manual. Talk about all the different options and there's pictures. So that's that's kind of cool. It's like some more uh, parts books. for all the all different types of maintenance done on it. So look at this. October 21st in 92 it had 29,940 miles on it. That's uh, check for fluid leaks. Looks like a valve cover. This is uh, this is a little hard to read. So something with a radiator. Oh, this is all like coolant type stuff. A company called A Plus Radiator. Uh, it says it was painted in late late November of '89, early December '89. Uh, Wimbledon white, and then a paint number. It's from Barnes's Thunderbird shop. Uh, looks like uh, oh, some muffler work. Oh, there's a whole bunch of receipts in here. One's from uh, this one's for thirty-four hundred dollars. It's got a whole bunch of uh, stuff on it. Some hood hinge, hood hinge repair, some shifter linkage, speedo cable, something to do with the top. It's hard to read some of this. Wheel bearing. like some accelerator pumps and carburetor issues, thermostat coil points, that's like a tune-up. So this is kind of cool. I won't, I won't hit all these, but uh, there's, a, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. There's oil changes. Trans fluid changes. So at least it, it kind of looks like this car was taken care of a little bit. You know, it's, it's definitely got some issues now, but uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that was done. Looks like uh, the engine was rebuilt at some point as well for about $6,500, so that's kind of nice. It's kind of nice to have all those receipts, and yeah, let's check and see if there's anything else in here. Look at this, Polaroid. Got California tags on it yet. That one's got some primer on it. Some primer photos, a photo of the engine bay. Super dusty, dirty interior. So that one looked all cleaned up. One of the front end. Some more dusty, dirty interior. Because I, I do know this car did sit in a barn for a while. So those must have been when he uh, when he got it out. So it looks like uh, that's that's what we ha have. So it's kind of nice. It's got some uh, documentation with it. Kind of shows where the miles were. Um, from what I saw, it varied between 29,000 and 30,000 miles. Um, you know, dating back 30 years. So that's probably the right mileage on it at that point. So... I hope you enjoyed looking through those folders. I know I did. Skinny gap down there. 